In France, the nobility's power was controlled by Louis XIV, undermining their authority with restrictions on the nobility, giving them special offices and titles with no actual power behind any of them. Most of these positions in the court were given with threat of punishment if none of them were taken or done as he pleased. Examples of this was him treating them like dogs. He would have them scratch on the door until he gave them permission to talk to them. Louis undermined the nobility once again by his ceremonies every morning to dress him and the festivals his wealthy, in his wealthy palace. All this plus the changing of the dress codes had driven the nobility into debt. This not only gave him control over them, but also a way to watch out for rivals. There was a lack of individuality and most of this focused on the masses. With Louis raising taxes every time for Versailles and infrastructure, the nobility was only getting 30% of what they used to get. These nobles were then divided into two groups, nobles of the robe and nobles of the sword. The old nobility, or knightly class, possessed feudal land estates, acquiring these titles through serving positions in the military and sometimes government. They sold some of these positions to maximize income, causing a conflict between both groups. The noble of the swords were more independent from the king and had a social prestige with lower taxes, but had a lower income and less votes. Created out of rage, the, noble, the nobility of the sword were based on merit, appointed to various judicial and administrative offices, which gave them status. They later replaced the noble of the sword in the Palace of Versailles because they had a more status pull. They were dependent on their salaries and were given by the king and their votes always favored the king. Overall, the nobility was fighting over who had special treatments and rights approved by the king. This was all based on privilege and power. Peter the Great was another example of a strong centralized ruler who gained power from, from his nobles. Peter the Great ruled as part of the Romanov dynasty, which was the end of the Moscovite Russia. The Streltsies and Old Believers strongly opposed his regime and he broke the power of the boyars, which were the untitled noblemen with feudal estates who were usually courtiers of the royal household. One of Peter's greatest accomplishments was building St. Petersburg, which he won at the Battle of Poltava against the Swedes, which was a key victory in 1709. In its time, it had been called the Window on the West and also the Venice of the North. And St. Petersburg was largely a naval city, which was due to some of his many reforms involving the army and navy. Peter the Great is largely accredited with creating the first Russian naval force, and it had over 500 ships and 24 different shipyards. He also had a standing army of over 210,000 men, who were drafted as peasants for 25 years of service each. Peter the Great was most well known for his many reforms, one of which was the Table of Ranks, which was a hierarchy of 14 different categories based on merit, and nobles and peasants would use it to prove themselves worthy of their king. This was unbearable to the nobles because they were forced to become dependent upon Peter's administration. Another westernization tactic which he used was the beard tax. He imposed special licenses and public shame if the peasants and public officials were seen wearing beards or other symbols of the previous generation. He was so fond of Western culture that he visited Europe several times in disguise to learn their secrets in trade and culture. He became a t an expert in naval technology and utilized those European naval tactics for his own fleet the Charter of Nobility. Set out in 1785, Catherine the Great legally defined the rights and privileges of noble men and women in exchange for assurance that the nobility would serve the state voluntarily. These privileges included the right to transmit noble status to wives and children, judicial protection over rights and property, power over the serfs, and exemption from personal taxes. Catherine took power in Russia with a very weak claim to the throne, and as a result, she tended to curry favor with the nobility. This charter is evidence of that. Furthermore, Peter the Great transformed the Orthodox Church. Instead of it being headed by a patriarch, Peter had the church governed by a committee which consisted of bishops and bureaucrats appointed by the emperor. Westernization and trade strengthened Russia greatly and allowed the Soviet Union to form over time.